I love Cleo Denial. She is one of my favorite Monster High characters. I will be revamping her with my own spin on her character. The main issues I want to address are that she doesn't look ancient as her lore states, and she kind of just looks like a teenager, running around in an inaccurate pharaoh costume from Party City. I want to make her look far older and more withered, more like an actual mummy. I hope to more deeply integrate the ancient Egyptian theme instead of just slapping hieroglyphs and bandage print onto her clothes, giving her some gold accessories and calling it good. Starting right in on the face up, I'm using my finger to blend some pastel and colored pencil onto her cheeks as blush. Over the course of the face up, I struggle a lot to try to get this symmetrical, and it never really quite works out. I block in the basic shape of her pretty almond eyes with some white acrylic paint. G3 Cleo Denial is such a pretty face sculpt, like whoever made this really knew what they were doing. Now I rough out the boundaries for what will be her eyeshadow look later. Trust the process, girly. Yeah. This cut crease is gonna look so fabulous. Yeah. Why the fudge does it look like? Yeah, it's already wet. Okay. Now I block out what will be the blue part of her cut crease eyeshadow look. I am so committed to this cut crease look. I know it's... And now I start on contouring the cheeks, which, heads up, this will go absolutely hog wild. Oh, buff um, buff lump nugget. I just laid down the Mr. Super Clear Law on this silly little doll. And I've added just a bit more white paint to the eyes. I really want to get that shit white. I really want to get that shit white. Now I go further defining the contour region with some darker color. Oh, for... What the fudge? What the fudgina? The hog wildening of this contour job intensifies. You can see I am going for a much more decayed look than initially planned. My fingies are getting a little dirty from all this blending. I've been using them to do. <laughs> now I'm adding some highlights to the contour job because I like a very dimensional girl. She looks a little crackheaded right now at this very second. I'm just getting a feel for where the pupils are going to be. Just building up the eyeshadow a little. Now I'm going over the region with some paint to make it pop. Now I'm fudging with the eyeliner placement. This is a lot of trial and error with the old kneaded eraser. It's not really needed because it's a piece of junk. Um, it really helps if you put down a coat of Mr. Super Clear before you do this so that it doesn't mess up your paint job underneath. It's gonna take a lot of layers to build up any goddamn opacity with this. Now I'm finalizing the eye and lip makeup with some gold paint, which has very poor opacity. Fun part, it's time for the glitter! Glitter. Now I put on another layer of the gold paint and while it's wet, I sprinkle glitter onto it.
I got that insatiable caution. Oh yeah. Oh nutsack. Now some black acrylic paint to finish off the eyeliner and just get everything looking very sharp. That looks seriously neat. Now for the absolute hell that is eyebrows. Spoiler alert, I just straight up could not do this on camera. Now I'm adding shininess to the eyes with some gloss Mod Podge. I'm not entirely sure where I got the idea to do this asymmetrical only one pupil look, but it just looks very ghoulish and otherworldly, and I really like it. I'm kind of embarrassed. I really thought I was recording, but I guess that just wasn't the case. I am not a fan of the just sculpted on uh, flesh colored bandages on the stock Clio doll. As you can see, I already previously painted them before starting this whole process, and I like that a lot more, but I still want something with more depth and texture, so here I have this nice porous fabric that I am cut into strips and am just using Mod Podge to wrap them around her limbs so that it looks like she has real mummy bandages. I'm also bandage wrapping additional parts of the doll to really drive the point home. I also like the idea of having her chest bandage wrapped, because if you look at ancient Egyptian art, some of the outfits that women are depicted in would not cover the chest. With this, I can do clothing that leaves the chest area exposed without it being lewd or inappropriate by modern day standards. I like the aesthetic of having lengths of bandage just kind of freely dangling. I brush Mod Podge over those areas to keep them from further fraying and unraveling over time. This also gives the morph structure for holding that wind blown look. Cheesy! Say hi to Chee Wee! Say hi to Cheesy for me! Cheesy! I don't know why some mummies seem to darken and turn black over time, but I think it's a really cool look. So I kind of scrubbed some black pastel onto various areas of the doll for weathering. I also just kind of lightly brush it over the bandage regions to make them dirtier. Because let's just face it, Cleo's not washing those or else they're coming undone. Using a ladder stitch with some copper wire and seed beads, I make a miniature version of one of those beaded Egyptian collars. Now on to clothing. Now I glue this notched hem piece onto the circle skirt. Sorry, but with all due respect, the flump diddle. Now I just fold the tabs over and glue them on the inside. Look at this craziness. This is Pin City. It's really nice having a machine that actually go that can actually stitch slow enough to do this, you know? Oh gosh darn it, what is What the fudge? Technical difficulties. With how much of the inside of the skirt is visible in the back, I decide way too late in the process that it needs a contrasting lining, so I glue that in. 
the glue is squishing through who the ooh hoo glue who the ooh hoo glue who Here I go hand stitching a hook and eye closure to the skirt. This offers a very clean and precise fit. Sorry for the robot voice, my chronic laryngitis is flaring up so I can't talk. I stitch together this rectangular panel then glue it to the skirt. I am taking inspiration from the flap scene on Egyptian loincloths. Oh, what is going on? I sew pleats into gross grain ribbon to create a decorative trim. I use a piece of cardboard as a guide to ensure they are evenly spaced. I think I'm gonna switch over to a jeans needle. I then stitch it along the edge of the loin skirt. I add this decorative thread around the fabric to hide the unfinished edge. It doesn't initially want to stick. I cut more ribbon to various lengths to create a layered, cascading decoration. I glue them together at the end so that each hangs to a different length. I glue the ends down to the skirt holding them in place with craft clamps before stitching along the yellow ribbon at the top. Please, please. I glue rhinestones along the ribbons. This is quite tedious, but well worth it in the end. I find greater control and neatness applying the glue with a brush rather than straight from the bottle. You hear that? Going straight from the bottle is smeller messy. Using pieces of a gold necklace I cut apart along with more copper wire and seed beads. I create a decorative belt thingy. I don't really know what you would call this. I want Cleo to have lots of shiny jewelry and accessories to emphasize her royalty. this I hate super glue I hate it so much I hate super glue so much super glue brings sadness and misery into my existence in case you haven't caught on yet historical Egyptian fashion is a significant influence although all of it is heavily stylized and remixed <sighs> For sake god damage god damage I did some research in anticipation of this doll to get ideas. Headdresses are such a prominent part of Egyptian iconography that I absolutely had to make Cleo a diadem. My understanding is that a diadem is essentially a highly decorated metal head band. Oh, for fart's sake. I started with a strip of cardboard. All of the decorations are different beads, with the centerpiece being a larger bead I split in half using a screwdriver. If you see a boo-boo, yes, I stabbed myself in the process and yes, it hurt. I panted the entire thing black and then stippled on layers of gold. Baby girl, have mercy on my nostrils. I added blue and turquoise for accents. I have the most cursed and unhinged case of Butterfingers where, like, I don't just drop items, I straight up throw them across the room. It's kind of terrifying. Some detail of the decorative beads was lost in the dark blue, so I mixed up some pale metallic tones and did some dry brushing to make everything pop. This was a huge project. I kind of ran out of time, so I just pilfered these shoes from one of my Rainbow High dolls. I love how the transparent vinyl shows off her bandaged foot. I want to do a follow-up where I make more stuff for Cleo later, possibly including some Egyptian-style sandals. But for now I'm Cleo'd out and need to work on something else. I plan to do Frankie as well. Whether this will be a two-off or a series remains to be seen. I have Claude and Claudine as well but I haven't decided if they will be revamped or sacrificed to make different characters. 
Yes, I added extra paint and glitter to tat. No video of that because it happened while I was out of state. I forgot to mention it earlier on.